All right, thanks for tuning in. Once again, this is Miles Sistrunk with the St. Louis American and STLAmerican.com here with former 140-pound, 147-pound champion, Devin Alexander the Great. Uh, Devin, thank you for joining us today. I know you're busy uh, preparing for your December 13 bout with Amir Khan. Uh, this is a major bout for you. Um, the winner has, has been talked about for Floyd Mayweather or other big fight opportunities. Also, this is your first fight in Las Vegas, which is amazing uh, because you have such a stellar career fighting in Vegas. What does that mean to you? Well, everybody in boxing knows that fighting in Vegas is big. Like, that's the boxing capital of the world. Like, everybody wants to fight in Vegas in front of the big lights, you know, have your name pl plastered everywhere, you know, the big screen, the outside, the hotels or whatever. So... It's pretty big, and, you know, I grew up watching some of the big fights in, in Vegas, like Mike Tyson and, you know, Lennox Nim and all them top-notch guys. So, you know, it feels good to be amongst that. And, you know, a lot of people don't get a chance to experience this opportunity, but I'm definitely blessed, and I'm happy, and I'm excited for it. And like I said, I was surprised when I found that out. Um, tell me, how does that come about? Because I know you were supposed to fight in Vegas a couple times, but... Uh, the fights just fell through for one reason or another. Yeah, my professional career, career I was supposed to fight, um, you know, in Vegas a few times with Don King um, at the Treasure Island and a few other times, but it always fell through. So, you know, my whole career I've been wanting to fight there, so I always say if I was to fight there, it's going to be for some big. You know, I wasn't supposed to fight there at the time that I was scheduled to fight there. So here it is, some big main event. You know, um, when the time I was supposed to fight the Treasure Island, I wasn't supposed to be main event. So I'm fighting the Vegas main event. So it doesn't get any bigger than this at the MGM Grand. You know, um, a kid from North St. Louis, um, growing up where I come from, you know, you don't see too much of that, you know, and it, it's amazing. Yeah, absolutely. MGM Grand center stage, is, it's a big deal. Uh, you talked about St. Louis. Uh, St. Louis has a rich boxing history um, you know you go back Sonny Liston fought out of St. Louis Henry Armstrong uh, you had the Spinks brothers you had Corey Spinks Teron Millette all champions yeah. here in St. Louis and now you're the most recent champion mm -hmm. uh, what does that mean to you to to fight under that strong St. Louis legacy yeah like you said St. Louis got a rich boxing history I mean you know, I think one of, one of the years, I think it was the 88 Olympics, they said they, they could have brought the whole St. Louis team to the Olympics and beat and all on win gold, you know. And, um, you know, it means a lot to be amongst those, you know, greats because those consider some of the greats. Um, and it, it, it feels good to have my name mentioned with those guys. But I'm also trying to be better than those guys. You know, when, when people mention guys from St. Louis, you know, all the – great fighters from St. Louis, I want them to say that I was the best, you know, I just, I don't want to just be considered, okay, yeah, he was good, he was good, but I want to be considered one of the top guys from St. Louis, and plus in the world. Yeah, and, th and that's one thing I've noticed about you, people know you're a soft-spoken guy, but at the same time, you're confident, you know, you're confident about yourself, uh, you got a little swagger about yourself, mm -hmm. how uh, necessary is that when you're a fighter to be confident in your abilities? Well, you have, well, you have to, you can't doubt yourself because when, you, when you're second guess, guessing, things don't come off right. Um, like, um, say for instance, if I was to go in a ring and I'm thinking, I'm thinking, I'm not, I can't follow the game plan. So you got, you got to be confident, you know, and you got to be able to turn it on when you get in the ring. You know that that nice guy that's, hey, okay, I'm scared to hit you. You can't you can't take that in the ring. You got to be mean. You got to be fierce. You got to go in there, follow the game plan, and get to work. So um, that's something I learned, you know, when I first started out. Um, I was cautious about hitting people, and you know, but now that's something you learn. You, you got to hurt people. This is the hurting game. You know, professional, you get this the hurting game. My coach mentioned it today when I was working. This is the hurting game. You got to hurt somebody. And that's what I learned, and that's what I'm trying to do. Yeah, it's definitely a hurt business. Uh, Amir Khan, your opponent, he's known for having a little suspect chin. Mm -hmm. Is that something that you're going to try to exploit? Well, of course, of course, you know, and and the weakness that I have, I know I'm pretty sure he's going to try to exploit that. that. So being at this level, you know, is little for error. So you got to be, be able to capitalize on whatever their weaknesses is. So 
Um, we know we got a game plan. We know what his weaknesses are, and we're going to be trying to exploit him. Um, we know he got a weak chin. Um, people sleep on my power a lot, which is good, because once I sneak in there and and I and I touch him, and I touch him the right way, he's going to drop. All right, all right. Big words from uh, Devin Alexander, the great here, uh, Devin. Amir Khan is a fast fighter. You guys both have uh, tremendous speed. Your, your last opponent, uh, Jesus Soto Carras, is a little bit slower. You stayed in the pocket with him. Do you plan to do the same thing with Khan? Well, I plan on being right there. You know, I plan on being right there because Khan likes to use his legs a lot. And I plan on being right there. And he likes to rush in. He likes to just throw a lot of punches and jump back out. So we, we got a game plan for that. It's going to be a good fight. You know, it's going to be a good fight. And I'm going to have to follow the game plan to a T, and I'm going to get the job done. All right. Uh, your training camp is pretty much winding up. Fights just around the corner. Uh, how has your camp been? How prepared are you? Well, camp is always good. Camp is always good um, because when you love what you're doing and, you know, you, 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 you're good at it and you want to do it, then it's, it makes it funner and it makes it, you know, better. And, you know, my camps are always good, no no problems. Um, you know, come to the gym every day, go to work. This is my job. So kind of like your job, you know, you take it serious. And I, you got to take it serious. So um, this is my nine to five. Okay, with all of the uh, social unrest uh, with Ferguson, uh, and again, this is an area where you're uh, near and dear. I'm sure you got family and friends out in Ferguson. Uh, how much does that play into you wanting to put together a, a great effort uh, on December 13th? Yeah, it means it means a lot because I know that the whole world is watching Ferguson, and um, you know a lot of people got an opinion about Ferguson. And you know I'm from 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 St. Louis, which is Ferguson also. So it's important because we need that positive um, image. You know, me winning a big fight like this at Ve in Vegas. We need that positive image, and if I, when I win this, then we're going to be able to talk about some positivity and me being able to come back and, you know, doing something with the kids because I love being with the kids and hopefully doing something in Ferguson with the kids and, you know, getting my, going out there and let them see me, let them see a positive role model and just trying to better the situation instead of just being against it. I'm just trying to better it. You know, I've been – thinking about a lot of things I can do for that situation after the fight and we just see after the fight, but I definitely want to do something and definitely want to help the people. Okay, and we see a lot of fighters, they go away to train, they go to Big Bear or they go uh, to different mountains or to Vegas or mm -hmm. whatever, but you stay home, uh, train here, even with all this unrest again, you stayed here. Why is that? Well, I think – 80% um, of the guys that go to camp can't focus totally on boxing. They can't focus on the fight, the task at hand. And, um, you know, if they go to get away from the the problems, the distractions or whatever, I don't have that. You know, I can shut everything down. This is camp. I'm focused. You know, this is, I go to the gym. I act like it's camp. I act like I'm in Vegas or Colorado if I was to go to camp. So, I don't have that problem. I don't go out. I don't drink, smoke, or whatever. So I don't have that problem. So I'd rather be home. You know, I'm focused enough to stay at home and um, get the job done. I, I, I don't want plenty of titles at home in my in my gym. So hey, I can yeah. do it. Sounds like a very disciplined fighter. And we see, you know, you look at Bernard Hopkins. You know, he's lived that disciplined mm -hmm. life, and he's mm -hmm. still fighting at uh, 49, about to turn 50 oh, years old, God. still fighting at that world class level. Uh, well, I appreciate your time, Devin. Any last thoughts that you want to tell St. Louis American readers or stlamerican.com visitors um, about your fight and what to expect on December 13th? Well, to all my fans and all the people that know me who don't know me, um, this is what I love to do. This is what I've been um, fighting for since I was seven years old. This is the biggest fight in my career, and it's not going to get nothing but bigger from here, and I just expect to be explosive December 13th, um, become a household name after this fight, and be one of the top guys in boxing. So continue to support me, continue to follow me, and you guys are going to continue to see me. Positive things. Yeah, and, and you know, one last thing for the viewers, you know, you're 27 years old. So, yeah. you know, because yeah. you've had you've been at this world-class level for so long, people may think, oh, you're 27, yeah. so you're in your fighting prime. 
right. you know, and you fought guys like uh, Marcos Maidana, Lucas Matisse, Tim Bradley, uh, Sean Porter, uh, Soto Karras, Junior Witter. People forget about a lot, a lot of those fights, but yeah, I got to make them remember. All right, make them remember. All right, thanks a lot for your time, champs.